Hi to all birdies. Welcome to another edition of Charles's Writing Mukbang. <laughs> How have you all been doing? It's been a couple of weeks, I think, since the last one of these. I had a live stream last week. Today, I'll be honest, although I have some foods from my diet you know, in the freezer, simply put, I've already eaten them for this channel before, so I figured it wouldn't really go for all that well. So I decided to pick up something from Chipotle. That's actually on my diet. It's a Chipotle beef power bowl. And frankly, I'm very curious to see how it tastes. Cross my fingers up. Let's see now. There we go. Now that's a good taste. I'm trying to think what it tastes like. A bit of guacamole mix, I know that. Not mayo, but something good. Hmm. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. My new computer, by the way, is finally set up. It's been very, working very well for me. Although, unfortunately, we don't have the right connections for the monitor, so I've only got one monitor rather than my usual two. What I highly recommend, if you're working with computers at all, get a second monitor at least. It just, like, I spent most of my life without it. It's like, eh, what's the point? I try like, just the ability to do two things at once without having to flip back and forth in a screen, like within the same screen, is so good. Just like this. Yeah, we're also thinking about like getting some, you know, the ingredients for this one just cooking today, but most of the stuff we make is slow cooker stuff. And slow cooker doesn't work well when you're only when you're a few hours from filming. <laughs> now, one thing I want to talk to you about is an idea I've been toying with. I haven't even told this to Crystal yet. I'm thinking about doing a weekly review of indie books like you know non like you know officially published but like self-published authors yeah so i can check out like good stuff and like yeah you know, you know, relay it to you as well as show you how the concepts i'm you know talking about in terms of writing apply for you know self-published work For example, in my previous you know, Harry Potter review, I mentioned you know, how well J.K. Rowling did, you know, foreshadowing. Like, there's a concept called a Chekhov's gun. After author Ant you know, Anton Chekhov, I believe the name is, where basically what he said is. If you put a, you know, a gun on the mantle place, be sure that someone shoots it by the third act. In short, something that is important enough for you to put detail into it is important enough for it to be important for the story. Sorry, went a little bit of a diversion there. But the point is that I'd like to be able to, you know, talk about the concepts I'm discussing while, you know, going over other published works, kind of more like a, kind of like a case study, if anything. Well, if any of you are working on your own stories and you'd like me to discuss them in, on this channel, I'd be happy to do so. Now, 
I've started reading me with my writing coach every couple weeks and one of the things I've learned recently is it's kind of hard to explain but basically a romance between two characters in a romance versus two characters who they get together but they're not a romance have some similarities but there can also be some significant differences In a straight, you know, romance, and basically what I mean by that is in a you know, in plain romance, you focus exclusively on the romance itself. You're going to see a lot of obstacles. And you might see these outside of a you know, you know, romance. But you're especially going to see them in a romance itself. Because in a romance, the will they or won't they, that is the plot. There might be other things you know, supporting it, but that is the you know, main focus of the plot. Thus, as my writing coach put it, you need to know, one, why yeah, they should get together, but also... What is the reason that there's no way they're going to get together? Because the story of the romance is about overcoming that. Now, in contrast, in a you know, with a romance as a side story, like basically, uh, let me think of a good character. Actually, I'll just use Harry Potter because I talked about it already today. A lot of people were not very happy with, you know, the final relationships. Like, one of them in particular, a couple of them in particular were pretty much, by the way, so-and-so got together with so-and-so. And they had a baby, Mazel Tov. And that can actually work to an extent in non-romance, you know, focused stories. A lot of, I probably wouldn't do it quite like that. That's a little bit overdone, but the, you know, ro and getting together between the characters can be a bit more, shall we say, cliche or basic. I have to explain this. In a non-romance focused story, you can often you know, get by with, okay, they're attracted together, they're, and they get together, they're happy. In a actual romance, congratulations, you made to step one. Step two, they run into trouble, Step three, they you know, you know, get close to getting together. Well, actually, there's a full seven beats, but long story short, yeah, you know, just the you know, attraction is all, pretty much enough for a non-romance focused relationship. Whereas in a romance, that's basically, if you ended it there, congratulations, you've made it through about a third of the book. You're done. Good job. Woo-hoo. Yes, I can do sarcasm. I just can't interpret it. As you know, I've learned many a time. On that note, if I were to do this you know, book review concept, would you prefer me to first focus upon a romance, a fantasy series, or perhaps a different genre?
ironically enough, although I read a lot of romance fan fiction, I very rarely read a straight romance book or novel or watch one on TV. I think it's because in the fan fiction, I'm already invested in the characters, whereas I'm not so much in the novel itself, and the concepts aren't often interesting enough for me. But I think that I may have been, should I say, prejudiced against them? I don't think I've given you them a proper chance. So, if you guys want me to check out a romance, I'll be happy to do so and review it and use that information for the next tune discussion. Mm. I need to ask Chris how much this was because this was delicious. Now, my writing coach and I have been engaging in an interesting discussion of late about description. Now, this is one of the things that, how should I put this? You know how I told you I you know, like to cop and you know, basically literally write word for word what another author will do to practice? He's doing something similar. He's taking a book from this fairly popular series. I mean, have you heard of The Wheel of Time? I heard it's decently good. Note, I'm actually saying this to tease my wife who's sitting to the left of me and going, because <laughs> she loves it. I never actually read it though. But what my writing coach says is that reading in a study in thorough detail has given him you know, some thoughts on description as well. Like, oh, I wonder if part of it's because fiction has changed a bit over the over the years. It used to be that these very thorough descriptions were the norm. Now it's more like setting the stage for the plot. So let me ask you this. Do you prefer to read very thorough description, like very in detailed description? Or do you prefer something more along the lines of like just enough to understand what is going on in the scene so you can keep track and so you can focus you know, on the plot? I'm more of the latter type. I like to you know, I like to, you know, make my description as you know quick and easy to read as possible. Like, how should I put it? And I use that phrase a lot, I know, I'm sorry. Let me compare it to this. I like to use very, you know, bold colors, quick colors as an artist. I'd rather, and if, if I were an artist, I'd use, you know, bold colors. I wouldn't go for very subtle and, you know, and deep and detailed. I give you just enough information, just enough, you know, details to get a picture in your head. But as my writing coach said, in one of the very first chapters of the book, they introduce this bard character who apparently has no real importance in the story as a whole, but they introduce him in such detail, it's incredible. Like 300 words is spent in just describing this bard, who again has no importance for the story beyond like just the first little bit, other than like establishing them as like a back road, uh, backwater place. Mm. But yeah. 
I, you know, I'm definitely thinking about doing like a weekly review of like an you know, indie book I've read recently. Would you be interested in seeing that? Please be sure to let me know in the comments below. But first, I shall bid you farewell. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you folks next week. Bye-bye, fellow birdies.